Hey everyone. What the hell is on my head? Is that a tinfoil hat? Nate! What the hell? You know what? We're gonna set this tinfoil hat aside. There might be a part of this uh, video that we need to wear it for because there is some strangeness in some new rumors. However, uh, we have some great rumors in here from two super reliable sources. One of them being official Nintendo trademarks. Uh, it doesn't really get more official than that than just Nintendo outright tweeting out a trailer or something or tossing an announcement in Nintendo Direct. Now, obviously not all trademarks come true, but it at least lets us know Nintendo has been thinking about something in particular. Uh, and we'll get into that. We also have two other major sources uh, that have massively proven track records. Uh, one of them that I'm literally going to show you proof and evidence of their track record because uh, it's been conveniently compiled, which is just, just great when you're actually someone like me and you're trying to fact check things and then you have a nice compilation of it already ready to go. So that being said, uh, let's get into these crazy rumors because it's about Zelda. Hello, Zelda, Zelda. It's about E3. Um, there's more than just Zelda here though. We got some, oh man, I can't wait, wait to get into it. I'm going to try to separate it out by where the leaks come from so we know who to properly source them to. So yes, there might be some things in this video that don't come true, but we need to pay attention to which segments come from which, you know, leaker per se. Uh, and that will obviously be something we'll be tracking because there's so much information here. If the one person's wrong, despite being right on quite literally everything they've ever said, um, that's going to be <laughs> pretty interesting. So before we get into it, I know, contain the hype for a moment, just for a moment. I know you read the title. Just contain for for, for just just stay here with me. I gotta tell you that we have a giveaway going on right now for one hundred dollars cash mon, 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 money, making it rain up in here. That's right. I'm trying to help out one of you lucky viewers this month. Uh, I know times are hard. I know uh, despite vaccines and all the stuff being out there, COVID has ravaged many of us. I've been impacted at it at times, but I am able to thankfully afford to give one of you people a hundred bucks. So to enter. All I really ask is that you be subscribed to the channel. Uh, but obviously, if you go down into the uh, description or pinned comment, you'll see ways to enter liking videos. I actually, I don't even think liking videos is part of it, but uh, commenting on videos, all that jazz. Um, I, I just, I really appreciate your guys' support. Obviously, uh, we're on our road to 70K as well. So if you just like this video in general, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And uh, let's get, get into these rumors. Uh, so I know what people want to know. Before we even get into this stuff, and this will let people know, maybe run away if they want to just jump off the video and not give a shit about anything being said here. And that is, who are the sources? So, the sources are Kellios FR and Samus Hunter, combined with, obviously, an actual trademark from Nintendo. Now, Kellios FR is technically known more for their, uh, their, their Pokemon leaks. Uh, and, yeah, they get some of it right they also get some of it wrong i would say uh their track record is spotty at best but there has been correct leaks that have come from Kalios fr that's why people still follow Kalios fr uh which if you didn't know fr just french you know they're, they're french um but yeah so uh we'll denote what's from Kalios, and then samus hunter is an interesting account um i this isn't the first time i've heard of them i've actually heard of samus hunter a couple other times they are a twitter account but what's interesting about this twitter account is there's nothing but correct information on it everything they've said and the twitter account hasn't been around for too long maybe, maybe like six months a year uh everything they have said has happened all of it they said things before we even knew Want to know an indie world was coming? They said an indie world was coming way ahead of when we found out about it. They said a lot of stuff. In fact, you want to know Samus Hunter's track record? Boom! Here you go. Like, this is just stuff that's that, that, that's been compiled. There's more, obviously, the indie world thing. Uh, yeah, Samus Hunter appears to be pretty damn legit. I have no idea how they're getting this information. Maybe they're actually a Nintendo employee using a second account. That is always something, especially when you see some of the information we have here. Definitely sounds like a Nintendo employee using a second account. 
maybe it's just someone who has a family member that works at Nintendo. You know, one of those, my dad, my, my dad's uncle's grandma's sister works at Nintendo. I don't know. But all I know is everything they say has been correct. Uh, so let's first get into Samus Hunter stuff because most of this information comes from Samus Hunter and we have information on things happening before E3 and things that are happening during E3 along with a few other random tidbits. So let's get into the pre E3 stuff. This is probably the least exciting stuff, sort of. There actually is one thing that's pretty exciting. Um, so first off, we're going to get Mario Golf Super Rush news before E3. Not a surprise there. We're going to get Miitopia news before E3 and specifically there is potentially a demo. He, he, they, they know likely a demo is going to be part of this news. So if you get Miitopia news uh, before E3 and part of it th that there's a demo, hey, this is the originating source of that. Um, there's going to be an Animal Crossing New Horizons update. I mean, that's anyone can really say that. They, they update that, that game a lot, but there you go. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise 2.0 update will be talked about. Uh, before E3. Uh, a new game trial is going to be coming to Nintendo Switch Online, so we'll have to see if that comes true. Uh, Ace Attorney games. This is kind of an interesting one. Ace Attorney games are going to be announced before E3. They don't note if it's like remake games, port games, new games. They just say Ace Attorney games are getting announced before E3. So, you know, that that that's really, really interesting. Ace Attorney. Uh, we, we need more Ace Attorney in our lives. Uh, there's going to be Pokemon stuff revealed before E3, but really it's just going to be um, more big reveals for already announced games. So we're not going to get like any new Pokemon games announced, but you could probably hear things for Shining Pearl, Brilliant Diamond. I'd love to hear about Arceus Legends. I think they might wait on that a bit. Presume we're going to get news on new Pokemon Snap. I mean, literally the game comes out like, what, 10 days? Like, <laughs> it's pretty soon. So I presume we're going to get more information. We just got like a new trailer, I think, not too long ago. There's going to be more info coming out for the game before release. So um, th that's probably already going to be true uh, just based off of that. Anyone, I guess, could predict that. But if there's other things talked about uh, for the other games, well, there you go. Uh, there's also going to be a Zelda reveal, okay, before E3 that isn't directly related to Breath of the Wild 2. Now, uh, this could be DLC. For Age of Calamity, uh, there could be more information on DLC coming um, for Age of Calamity. That that's obviously a possibility. Something in May uh, that that wouldn't really be too shocking. There could also be a, a, a new remake announced, a new something Zelda, right? Zelda reveals that aren't directly related to Breath of the Wild 2. So we, I, again, this is where I start to get hyped a little bit because this person has a, like a perfect track record, and I just I'm not, I'm not quite sure what this could be. Now. Let's get into the E3 2021 details. Uh, so for E3 2021, they don't actually talk about much, but there's a few specific events they've heard of that they're not actually 100% sure are going to happen. Basically what they say is um, Samus Hunter is noting that COVID is making things quite difficult at Nintendo for some of their E3 plans. Um, so they do have a lot of huge plans for this year. Although, like anything else, some things will be delayed. Now, maybe they're just hedging their bets on these specific events. But he's basically saying, hey, if these events are happening, we'll find out in early May, likely around May 6th or so. If you go back to E3 2019, we found out about Nintendo's E3 plans um, on May 9th. So, I mean, that's right around the normal timing that Nintendo reveals plans for E3. Uh, and these plans are uh, that there's going to be a couple tournaments happening at E3, which... I mean, feels kind of weird because there's no in-person event, but, you know, this is part of those COVID restrictions and trying to do online events and all that. We'll see. Nintendo has had online events during COVID, so uh, you never know. Uh, he says that uh, one of them is going to be a Smash Ultimate tournament. Uh, not, a, not a shocker there. Uh, and then he goes on to say, this is the weird one. There's going to be a Splatoon 3 tournament, although he notes... This might just be a Nintendo Treehouse tournament. So what, it, what he's saying here is that Splatoon 3 actually has most of its um, big things finished. Most of the gameplay elements are finished. It, there's probably some mapping out of different modes and different maps and all that. But pro there's probably at least one map done, which is we saw that in the reveal trailer. Uh, and enough playable weapons and, and features to potentially have a playable version that Treehouse could be playing. And you might be going, but why the hell would they play Splatoon 3? Why? Well, apparently Splatoon 3 is going to be an early 2022 release. So January, February, March, April. Those are the months I basically consider early. Because once you start getting into May, that's really close to the middle of the year. Uh, so, you know, January, February, March, April. Uh, 
somewhere in there is basically what he's saying is when we're going to get Splatoon 3. So that is why Splatoon 3 will be featured, obviously, at E3. And they would do it with a possible Nintendo Treehouse tournament, which I think could work. Uh, if they have enough employees willing to come in person specifically, maybe it does work online. You know, I, I have no idea how fleshed out Splatoon 3 is, is at this point. But they did reveal that as the first game revealed for 2022, which makes you feel like maybe that is an early release in 2022. It looked really polished. So, uh, again, though, we've only had one trailer, and, and we all know trailers can be misleading. Uh, he also notes that there's still going to be your typical Nintendo Treehouse events and a digital direct presentation, which, again, that's what Nintendo does at E3. Uh, normally, yeah, in person, but, hey, N Nintendo's done this stuff digitally as well, so uh, obviously they always do their digital uh, direct now, um, at, no matter if e is in person or not. Usually Nintendo Treehouse is an in-person event. Maybe it will be in person for Treehouse, like in their office, but uh, we'll see. Treehouse, Nintendo Treehouse uh, Live for E3 is always a fun thing, uh, featuring developer, developers, deeper gameplay dives, uh, sometimes even game reveals. So I really hope that they do continue that for E3 2021. All right, other random tidbits from Samus Hunter. And this is um, just just kind of sort of outside of the scope of the other stuff. Uh, there are two Metroid games in the work. Uh, one being Metroid Prime 4 and one being a 2D Metroid. Now, it's notable 2D Metroid rumors have been floating around for, I don't know, a couple of years now. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't say this is like an originating source on that. This is more like another person piling on already um known rumors for a 2d metroid but they don't seem to be sure when these games will be announced so there's that um obviously i mentioned this between three is an early 2022 game uh also they know there are fire emblem remakes in the works they are not obviously those telius games and they they noted this before that that rumor on those telius remakes was proven fake uh we're not really fake more like blown out of proportion uh, because the originator person who did have a, a proven leak track record came out and said, nah, I was just saying what I want to happen. I'm, I don't leak things anymore. So it's not like the leaker did anything wrong. They just didn't preface that they don't leak things anymore when they said this is just a personal opinion. They didn't state that in their original Reddit comments. So that's kind of why things got blown out of proportion there. Uh, and that was obviously turned out to be fake and, and fake news. Um, Nintendo enthusiasts, thank you so much. They were able to get a hold of that person to verify that stuff. Uh, but this person, this person says there are Fire Emblem remakes in the works. It's just not those games. Uh, so there you go. All right, that is actually the end of Samus Hunter stuff. Um, really, really cool things there. Now this is where we get into the trademark. Um, this trademark caught me by surprise. It's actually something that happened last year, what flew under the radar, but we're gonna talk about it now uh, because this might tie into some E3 stuff. Um, Nintendo last year filed an Ocarina of Time trademark. Now, who cares, right? N Nintendo renews trademarks all the time. Uh, Ocarina of Time already has two trademarks out there. They have the original trademark for Ocarina of Time, uh, you know, based on the N64. Then they also have uh, the Ocarina of Time 3D trademark. Those are two separate trademark filings. And who cares? So they filed the trademark for Ocarina of Time. Who really gives a shit? <laughs> well, the thing is, this isn't re-upping a trademark. This isn't renewing a trademark. This is a brand new trademark. Filed on May 14th, 2020, set to expire on May 14th, 2030, because trademarks last 10 years. Uh, yeah, they filed a trademark for Ocarina of Time that's a new trademark that is independent of the N64 and Ocarina of Time 3D trademarks. What does this trademark mean? I have no idea. It doesn't provide any details other than games and merchandise okay that's what every single nintendo trademark says so last time they did this was ocarina of time 3d which obviously ended up being like a, a remake of, of ocarina of time for 3ds are we getting another remake remember the last zelda like remaster remake whatever you want to call it probably more of a remake than a remaster i don't know i i, I haven't really dove enough into it to find out it was Link's Awakening. Remember, they really they released Link's Awakening in 2019 on Switch. Here's the thing. They just called it Link's Awakening. They didn't call it Link's Awakening HD. They didn't call it Link's Awakening Remake. They didn't call it Link's Awakening Remaster. They just straight up called it Link's Awakening. If you did not know any better, you would swear it was a new Zelda game. 
but if you know your Zelda history, you know Link's Awakening was originally a Game Boy game, then a Game Boy Color version was made, and now obviously the Nintendo Switch remake. So, is it possible we are getting Ocarina of Time on Nintendo Switch for Zelda's 35th anniversary as a remake, whether it's, I don't know, Resident Evil 2 style, Final Fantasy 7, you know, maybe like all those Unreal Engine remakes we have seen fans make out there. What if we get something like that and they literally don't call it HD like they've done in the past with Skyward Sword HD as an example? Because it's not HD in Ocarina of Time. It's a full-on remake. And who might be working on that? Well, we know Grezzo is working on something for Zelda. What if Grezzo was the one working on this remake? After all, Grezzo did the Link's Awakening remake. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if Grezzo is, would be the one working on it. Maybe it's such a big game that only Nintendo would trust themselves to work on it. All I know is that uh, this trademark exists. So are we going to see anything this year? I have no idea. But uh, that's pretty hyped, right? It's pretty hyped. All right. Um, the rest of this stuff uh, is not based on trademarks. Uh, this comes uh, from uh, this next one comes from Kellyos. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2 is going to have a major presence at E3 2021. I don't think that's too surprising. I obviously, AJ Anomu told us that we are going to hear about Breath of the Wild 2 later in 2021 when they announced Skyward Sword HD and obviously the Age of Calamity DLC. He's like, hey, we're going to talk about Breath of the Wild 2 just later this year. Um, so E3 would obviously make a lot of sense. A lot of people feel like the game still might arrive this year. Some think maybe not until 2022, but I mean, who knows? Maybe it is going to arrive this year, whether or not it arrives with the Switch Pro or not. That's obviously who really has any idea about Nintendo. But um, it is going to be very interesting to see them probably have a big blowout for Breath of the Wild 2 at E3. Now, if you actually consider what, what happened with prior Breath of the Wild, they revealed it at E3 2014. Two years later at E3 2016, they literally made the entire E3 about Breath of the Wild. Now, there was a unique situation. There was wii u failing as a platform transitioning to switch a, a bunch of weird stuff happening for at nintendo at the time it was a very weird period for nintendo but they killed it that e3 with one game that one game potentially being one of the greatest games ever made so could they be repeating history revealed that 2019 massive blowout at 2021 i'm not saying the entire e3 will be about just zelda this time but especially since there's no in person but I think if there was in person, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Breath of the Wild 2 themed. So there you go. Um, that is a thing. <laughs> uh, beyond that, uh, Kalios FR also said that we're going to get a Smash character reveal at E3 that's supposedly Zelda related. So this to me feels like Zelda 35th anniversary news drop in during E3. And, and, and somehow a Smash character reveal, like a new Zelda character? There's rumors out there, you know, potential that because they put up like a little fairy gift that maybe it's like Ocarina of Time related. Maybe it's Tingle. I have no idea. But uh, supposedly a Zelda Smash character. Again, this is not coming from Samus Hunter. This is coming from Kellyos FR. Has a bit of a spotty record. Something's right, something's wrong. Usually leaks Pokemon. This time did Zelda. We'll see. Um, this next one, I can't verify. Um, so um, HMK made a video covering a lot of these uh, rumors. Uh, and in the video, he stated that Spirit Tracks is supposedly getting a remake, um, you know, or, or, or whatever. And the thing is, I was unable to verify. I, I contacted him privately. He never got back to me. Uh, and then I tried to, because you guys know I have contact with him. He's been on our podcast. I've known HMK a long time. And so then I started digging through Kellyos and Samus Hunter and other places on the internet could not find an actual source for these claims so these are the ones where we're just gonna grab the old tinfoil hat we're gonna put it back on um because it feels really really weird to have a spirit tracks remake before phantom hourglass one phantom hourglass was more popular than spirit tracks spirit tracks wasn't a very popular game i think spirit tracks is the superior game and I guess if you get the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, which Jeff Grubb basically said we're going to end up getting, and if that was even part of this rumor report, it wouldn't really wouldn't that be, be that big of a deal or a surprise um, because it's just expected. But Spirit Tracks on Switch before Phantom Hourglass. I have a hard time buying this one. So we're going to leave the tinfoil hat on uh, for that one. 
that being said, I am Nathaniel Robojads from Nintendo Prime. I am hyped. This is just, all of this is hype. I mean, look at that. It, it went over a page in details. That is a lot of crap. Did we just get E3 spoiled? Not exactly. We didn't get that many games that will be shown off at E3 to spoil, but we got a lot of crazy stuff. Can you guys, Ocarina of Time Remake? Uh, what? Again, Nintendo trademark speculation. Uh, what the hell is going on with, like, Splatoon 3? E3? I, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm hyped for E3 every year. I'm just extra hyped this year. Nintendo owes us a bunch of big announcements. They do. I'm not saying that Nintendo owes us like they, oh, hey, they have to give it. No, they don't have to. I'm saying that we haven't had a massive slate of big announcements from Nintendo in a while. And we need to know what's happening the rest of 2021. And it'd be good to know more of what's happening in 2022. So E3 is the time to do it, baby. Oh, oh, as I just knock over my whole set. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like and subscribe if you want more videos like this. Whew, and I'll catch you in the next video.